what came to me, and it, it was in a way like a revelation. The Lord says, and this will probably amaze you, as it amazed me, without me, you can do nothing. And that parallels with his own way in which he walked with his father. So what he asked us to be completely dependent upon his guidance for every step and every word that we say, he did it himself. And the word that the Lord reminded me with was when he says, the son of the father loves the son, for he can do nothing without him. And then the Lord says, as he hears him speak, so he speaks. And as he sees him act, so he acts. Mm -hmm. Jesus could have said, Lord, I'm, oh Father, I'm your son. I know you're with me. So let me finish my task and ministry on earth. I know I have to die, rise again. But he made himself, from the moment that the Holy Spirit came upon him, not only available to the Lord, but the Lord did not dare to do anything without this connection with his father. Mm -hmm. and, and when he came to Jericho, he had all these people, oh, there he is, there he is, the Messiah, the Messiah. Oh, he went to miracles came. And he was surrounded and suddenly he stops. And he looks up and he sees a tax collector. And he says to Matthias, I need to be for lunch in your house. And he was disliked. So he built up in that man a feeling, oh, at least in front of all the people who don't like me because I'm a tax collector. If need. Uh, he, he honors me. So I said, Lord, how did you know? Because she says, I need to be with in your home for, for lunch. How did you know that? Were you so sensitive that with all the pressure around you, you were still able to see the deed that you were supposed to do? Or were you in the evening, as I use my prayers often, that the your father said, now you're going to Jericho. You will meet a person that needs your encouragement. You will sit in a tree. And you, when you come to the tree, I will tell you. Mm -hmm. And I said, Lord, you did not speak a word without hearing at first. So when the woman that was, and that was like a revelation to me, mm -hmm. thrown in front of him. And the Pharisees knew that the Old Testament says she has to be stoned. So ah, we get to be got him now, because he says that he is following the whole Torah. And he they threw this woman in front. So what are you going to do? And then I realized I do it more and more myself. That's why I know how to do it. We all read it and the Lord said, woman, where are your accusers? When he gave them all the Ten Commandments as he wrote with his finger in the sand like his father wrote with his finger in the tablets and they saw it and he says who convinces mm. who, who, who is without sin 
throw the first stone. But what I thought, Lord, this is amazing. You said you will say nothing but first hear the Father say. And this was the revelation. They cast this woman before me, Father. I know what your word says. And I often wait till I answer people. I, what do you want me to say? I cannot go against your word. And the Lord gave him the wisdom, his father. Hardly any Christian, although we flippantly say, without, without the Lord, I can do nothing. As Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. But we talk before we have really heard from him. And it reminded me of George Eversfield, a wonderful man. Who, who had a real experience, he said, Lord, will you come into my life? And the three days after that, he felt him coming into his life. And, and he said, what's happening? And the Lord said, I'm coming into you in answer to your request. And so everything was new to him. He stood, he was a businessman. He stood in, in New York and he said, well, okay, now I understand my life ends here and your life begins. Where do you want me to go? And he felt, go and take the tube, the underground. And then he knew where to go out. He just, it was all new to him. Then he, he saw a church with the door open and he said, well, what do you want me to do? <coughs> And the Lord says, I want you to go in. And he said, why? I want to show you your sins. I don't have sins, he said. Because he had lived quite a normal life. And he says, I sat in the front seat and I saw my whole life pass in front of me. And I could only say what later I saw in the Bible that every mouse will be stopped before his presence. Mm -hmm. He had nothing to say. Mm -hmm. This is me, yes. Mm -hmm. And he came to play a, a, a Bible study. And that's why it belongs to this message. And it was the first time I was in the Bible study. Everything was new. I loved this guy. I mean, I loved what I heard from him. So the pastor had different people sitting around the table and the passage of the scripture and says, now sister so-and-so, what do you feel about this passage? And brother John, and, and he, he thought that everybody lived like him, that they didn't do anything except first checking with the Lord. So. And they were all old, old, old timers. So, and then the pastor came to our new comfort, George, what do you think? But before the, he came to him, he was saying to the Lord, I don't know what to say. Well, what shall I say about this word? Do you know what the Lord said? And I know it's for us this. You're the only one around this table that asks my opinion about this. Mm -hmm. And that's why you will be the only one through whom I speak. Mm -hmm. And he, so, the pastor said, George, our newcomer, and he just let it go, what the Lord said. Mm -hmm. And the pastor was, he said, how, how did you know this? You're a, you're a greenie. <laughs> and he thought everybody lived like that. He said, I just asked him. And it so frustrated the pastors that he nearly, I believe, close to me. I said, well, thank you, thank you, don't know what, <laughs> what kind of man is this? But I have learned it, the Lord knows it. I have learned 
when people speak, I sense it's them. And I don't feel awaiting. Lord, what shall I? Some of you now spoke a question to me from South Africa and says, Young know, Wilma, I have to hold down this verse. And I don't know what the Lord wants to say through it. Knock and it shall be opened to you. Mm -hmm. Seek and you shall find. And I don't know why. And I had married her here, and the man disappointed her terribly and left her alone. And I, I didn't want to immediately to, to, to give a, a nice spiritual advice for me. Mm -hmm. I, I waited. I said, Lord, why do you give her this word? It's a wonderful word for you to. Seek and you shall find it. It's for all of us. Seek and you shall find them. Um, knock and you shall be opened. And when I addressed it a bit and I felt to tell her and I did not feel to say the super spiritual. Well, I hope you seek the Lord with all your heart. And we can be so spiritual that even the Lord is more normal. Mm -hmm. The Lord made a lovely Eve for Adam. And he could have said, well, you, 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 you should be enough with, I should be enough for you. You hear sometimes people being so extra. And the Lord says, in the poor fellow, he needs an Eve. It's not good for a man to be Alone. And that doesn't mean to say that we all will get our desires, but the Bible does say if we delight ourselves in the Lord, mm -hmm. Lord, you mm -hmm. are all for me. That's right. He will give us not his desire, super spiritual, but the desire of your heart. Mm -hmm. I said, Lord, you're amazing. Mm -hmm. And what came to me when I was preparing myself is that if I, I watch a lot of news and I see the Israelis always talk, 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 and they only want to hear their own voice. Mm -hmm. And they hardly give one another the time. And I hope that we Christians will be silent. And never speak till the Lord says, now you can say this. Most Christians, more than 80%, talk without checking with the Lord. That's why when I see, him, see them talk, they hardly not listen. And immediately they have an answer. What do you think about this guy? Oh, well, and I don't see what I've learned myself. Lord, what shall I say? And sometimes the Lord says, don't say anything bad behind the back of a person, but wait till I tell you what to say. Mm -hmm. And you know, I was thinking, Lord, this is what you say. What the Jews who never want to listen, neither to God nor to one another. It's they shout one another down. And I say, Lord, they don't even have, because they don't listen, they never learn. They only want to talk what they believe in. You see them already waiting. Oh, yeah. yeah blah, 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 blah. Oh. And sometimes Christians are a little bit like that too. They talk before they've heard. Mm -hmm. Smile, Israel. Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad I said, oh, this is amazing. The first word mm -hmm. of the credo mm -hmm. that we all believe in, <clears throat> yes. as from the Bible, is listen, shma. What we, 
but neither Jews nor Christians usually do. And if they would listen, they have all the answer in that one blessing. Shema Israel, Adonai, the Lord, Eloheinu, plural, the Lord, our God, our one, Yachad. And there's two words for one in the Hebrew, Yachid and Echad. And if a man, it's so beautiful, I said, Lord, it's all there. If a man is with his wife, it's two persons, but it is not Yachid, it's not Yachid, it's Echad. So what does the whole creed is there. Listen, and they don't listen. For the Lord your God, Adonai Elohim, the Lord your gods are one, not Yachid, Echad. I said, Lord, it's all there. If they only listen. If they only listen. And I asked Michiel today, I said, there's a verse, I don't know if Jeremiah of Ezekiel, and he knows the Bible well, and he says, I think it's Ezekiel, where it says, I was sitting in Tel Aviv at the river with the exiles. Mm -hmm. And I was shocked. Baffled. And I sat with them seven days in silence. And after seven days, the word of the Lord came to me. Wow. If you are not silent, smile. And you have, you talk before you have heard from the Lord. Mm -hmm. You can do something without. Jesus couldn't. He says, if the Son of Man speaks, as he hears the Father say, so he speaks. That's why he spent so much time, not in prayer only, but in listening. Maybe it was on the mountains in Galilee where my wife likes to be so much. The Lord said, tomorrow you go to Jericho. Mm. You're going to meet a man that they all hate. And you're going to bless them with your presence. I can't believe it. What You know what the Lord says? Abide in me. That's what it is in abiding. Not to do anything without asking him first. Even a telephone. I said, Lord, do you want me to telephone? Is there any message? I'm the whole time asking. Mm -hmm. For without him, I can do nothing. nothing. What the most Christians do is they do a lot <coughs> and they say, Lord, will you help me? Hallelujah. Yeah, I'm working with the Lord. No, no. You want the Lord to work with you. I want to walk with the Lord. And give him the full authority over my mind, over my words, and over my deeds. With God's help. Mm -hmm. And because the prophets were men of silence, they had the word of the Lord. <laughs> it was like the Lord showed me. Seven days he was sitting there. <laughs> and we would just say, okay, Lord, what, what do we have to preach of Kalabala about wash? And the Lord showed it to me now. The Lord has given the Holy Spirit to them that obey him. And the fact that you speak in tongues or you do things is not the most important. The most important is 
not that you speak in tongues, but that every word you say is guided by the Spirit. Mm -hmm. And then you will become a son of God. Mm -hmm. For the Bible says, all those that are not speaking in tongues are the son. All those that are led by the Spirit of God, mm -hmm. they are the sons of God. Mm -hmm. And I usually don't read the Bible when I speak, but there is a verse Psalm 149, because, and I believe it is important, that's why I'm thankful I can just say it, because it will revolutionize your whole life. You will be, well, what does the Lord says? Abide in me, without me you can do nothing, but if you abide in me, you will bear much fruit. I mean, most of the time on my bed, I'm not so good, but I, I'm amazed. I just don't talk to past, person pastors all over the world. The fruit that I still can have, because the Lord can use the little time that you have, if you listen, to give you much fruit. Mm -hmm. And that means also a prayer. The Bible says, we don't know how to pray for as we should. That's not true. When you hear Christians do, who have learned how to pray. Oh Lord, we thank you the way on. They begin, they begin. They can pray very well without the Lord. It's not true. Mm -hmm. We do not know how to pray for as we ought. Mm. So you have to. What is that? Is it? Mm. It is. For the spirit, if you let it, is willing to make intercession. Mm -hmm. If you wait on it, according to the will of the Father. But, and that's what I was reading, I said, look, this is amazing. I know I preached about it, but I have to do it again. Sorry, Lord. In Psalm 149, it says, the high praises are in their mouth, speaking about the saints. And they loudly praise on their beds. And then the Lord says, and they will have a sword in their hand to execute his will upon the earth, mm -hmm. to bind nobles and kings in iron fetters. the Lord. That is a complete different way of praising. Because what we do in nearly all the churches, that's why I'm so happy this is taken, is we have half an hour worship. One more worship. But if we will realize what Psalm 149 is, that the worship brings that power closer <laughs> and that if we say lord i'm not just worshiping you blindly but like the Levites went in front of the army of the lord and like david who worshiped him knew how to slay a lion mm. as and sometimes you feel it if you go this way or a babash and you know <coughs> lord there's power. Because I worship. I've, I feel I have a sword in my hand. But Lord, I, I just those I, I just want to worship. I'm not political, please, Lord. I but I, 
You have a sword in your hand. No, no, Lord, I'm not political. Just, just let's worship. Let the high praises be in their mouths and if we are sensitive in the Holy Spirit. He says, Lord, I feel you're so close. Is there anything that we can do together and execute a senator that doesn't want to live? Listen to you. I remember once with a woman, I said there was a senator so anti-Israel. And, and we both were praying and I says, Lord, you remove him from the Senate. Remove him. And he was removed after a while. So your whole prayer life, your praise life becomes different. Mm -hmm. If you, you say, Lord, this praise, I feel you. God says, look what you have in your hand, because you're in me. Mm -hmm. You have a sword. Why, Lord? To execute. It says even vengeance in the nation. To execute my will upon nobles, senators. Mm -hmm. What a difference that will make to our pray prayer and praise life. And then I thought, Lord, it's really too much. Hardly anyone believes that, that through our praise we can say, Lord, check for the tongue, I bring him under your place. Or this Orthodox that doesn't understand. Shmai Israel Adonai Eloheinu Adonai. This God, our gods, is one. Mm -hmm. So it's too much, Lord. Sorry, I could hardly believe it when I read this psalm. I wanted to read it to you, but maybe I do it at the end. I said, Lord, this is too big an honor. To put people out and to put people in by the power of praise that causes us to have that power in our hands. Mm. Ah, that's only for apostles and prophets. We just go on having half an hour praise before the pastor speaks. Praise the Lord. And then I read the end of Psalm 149 with all this powerful description of what praise could do if we open while we praise ourselves for the Lord to use praise to do X of authority. And at the end, I was so thankful. It said, this honor, it's an honor, have all his saints. Mm. That's the end of the song. I said, Lord, I would say that only prophets and apostles can do that. Are you really saying that if we praise him with the high praises, whether it's in Christ Church or anywhere else, in any church or congregation that you are, who listens to this message, and you said, Lord, my pastor doesn't see it yet, but I feel such a wonderful spirit here. I pray for that pastor that is against Israel in the Methodist Church. Lord, I bind him to you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, God. What else? I think again about Jesus. This woman was laying there. He had to be faithful to his father. Because he said to the devil, it is written. When he defended himself, he didn't say, I am the son of God. He defended himself with the written word of God. Devil, it is written. So what can he say? And I began to love Jesus. I said, Lord, I, I learned from you. Because that's 
so what I do. And people say, what's this? No, I, say, I don't have immediately an answer. Neither had Jesus. That's the miracle of the revelation. I said, Father, how did the Lord know how to answer? He said it. The Son of Man cannot say anything, or he must first hear the Father say. So he waited. They were all looking at him. He was putting the Ten Commandments with his finger in the sand. You shall not cover. You shall not give false testimony. Of the Lord thy God with all your heart. Mm. Any one of you who is without sin, see the, the majesty? Didn't even nervously say, well, well, you know, you, you know the Lord is grace and love. I mean, you know, yeah. Nothing of that human stuff. He's not ashamed to call you his brother. Mm -hmm. And we will be kings with him. He must have said, Lord, how do I answer it? Lord said, write my Ten Commandments with your finger. Remember how I did it? Maybe the Lord himself did it. On one side, I wouldn't be surprised. Put the game. You ask them. You cannot say that my word is not my word, but ask them. So he never said that the word of his father was not really so serious. Only God could have told them to be so wise. Mm. And only God can. If you live like that, <clears throat> smile and wait until he speaks through you. You will bear mm -hmm. much fruit in prayer and in every other way. Mm -hmm. If, as saints,